really starting to like that song. You know what that song means, right? Oh yeah, time for your weekly Berkshire Hathaway podcast. And again, joining us on the show this week is your real estate expert, John Brodine. John, been a week or so. How yeah, you been? Good to be here. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun to be here. Um, you know, every time we sit down and talk together, it's like uh, I'm, I'm going to a class or something because <laughs> I always learn so much. And, and and again, you know, that's part of the reason that we do this weekly podcast is uh, for people out there maybe looking to buy or sell their house and, and to learn about all the things that are involved with it, because there is a lot involved, yeah. which I'm finding out every week with talking to you. But um, one thing I want to talk about today uh, with you, John, is making your house presentable to sell. Yeah. I mean, let, let's start with the exterior, and and I've got a list of things I want to ask you about. But uh, how important is that? Because you know, a lot of times that's your first impression yeah. when you when you see a new house that uh, maybe you're looking to buy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I and I hope it's not a boring class that puts you to sleep. I'm, no, I'm glad it's a. I'm glad <laughs> it's exciting. So, uh, you know, what do you think of if you walk, you know, walk up to a house and the you know the grass is all nasty, it's not very well taken care of. You know, the the rock beds are a mess, weeds everywhere. Uh, there's no decorations everywhere. There's cobwebs everywhere. Even if the person's living in it, mm -hmm. you, you know, the assumption that you'd probably make is that it's not very well taken care of. Right. 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 You know, even if it's been maintained, but the person is just neglecting those things. Mm -hmm. Bad first impression. Yeah. And, and me, like, well, I would do that. Well, that's one of the first things I look at because I kind of pride myself in my yard yep. and, and how my house looks when you drive up. But there's things I look at, like paint, uh, if there's fences, what kind of shape are the windows in and the trim on the windows, you know, again, would be paint, um, roof, yeah. you know, things like that. Uh, I look at all of that stuff. And that's, and that's the smart stuff to look at. I mean, the other stuff is really easily fixed, mm -hmm. cheaply fixed, but it, it definitely gives a bad impression on you as a homeowner. If you've neglected, you know, that, that easy stuff, you know, like, even though it doesn't have anything to do really with the structure, if you're but if your shrubs and stuff are all mm -hmm. grown, you got weeds everywhere, really dirty. Um, it could make a really nice house that has good curb appeal mm -hmm. look like it doesn't have good curb appeal just because it hasn't been. Uh, you know, wouldn't you think like well. the neighbors would say something to them, you know, and, and, and say something like, you know, hey, dude, uh, you're really bringing down the value of my house and their house because your house looks like, well, like it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Depends on how upfront and uh, yeah, and how good you get along with them. Are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's all you need to start a fight now with your neighbors. Right. Well, and I mean, you got so many other things that you got going on. You know, that's just another thing that you would have to take care of, which would just be an annoying. Mm -hmm. I would think. I mean, yeah, you know, you're sitting there and you got to move in and do all this stuff, and you're like, well, geez, I I want to move my it. stuff, but I got to mow this yard first. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and have you ever actually had anybody, maybe you were going to show a house and, and you knew it was pretty decent on the out or the inside, but uh, not so, so on the outside. Have you ever had where you've driven up to meet somebody and they looked at the outside and went, I don't even want to look at this house. I, I haven't necessarily had it where they've completely walked away from it because mm -hmm. of these type of things, but I've had it, you know, these type of things might not show themselves in photos because it's kind of those up close detail things. As you're walking sure. up to the front door, you notice that there's huge cobwebs everywhere and that it's just filthy and dirty. Mm -hmm. That might not show in the photos very well, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to give you a really bad first impression where they might walk into this house that they were really excited about now with a negative mindset. Okay. You know, trying to find other spots where this owner skimped on. The, ah, okay, you know, I get things. that. Yeah, they got the bad taste in their mouth already. Yeah, exactly. You walk in, and that's the first thing they're they're going to look for other things that they don't like exactly. instead of things that they do like. Yeah, and and maybe subconsciously that's like, oh, I've got so much work to do. Like, how do I even decorate this nice and get it to look decent? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you walk up to a home that's just immaculately clean, I mean, that's the easiest, cheapest thing you know having everything be clean mm -hmm. we'll go into that in a second what to do but uh, if it's clean if it's well decorated there's you know seasonal uh, plants or flowers leading up to the walkway or in uh, leading up to the front door on the walkway um, you know everything is rock beds are well maintained shrubs are it just it's organized it makes people feel like happy and calm mm -hmm. 
And it also shows like, hey, this house can look amazing when it's decorated. Right, right. right. You know, I'm yeah. kind of OCD. And one of the things exactly. that cracks yeah, me, me up too. when <laughs> <laughs> I always I always just like get a giggle when I see like these pictures of houses that are up and I'm like, man, they did a good job with that shampooer lines. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, the carpet is just, it's just like perfectly in the. <laughs> exactly. The, the vacuum lines in the new carpet. You can't beat that. Yeah. No. And that's and like me. You can't fake that either. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm the same way with my grass. I, I do yeah. different directions each time. So it gives it like the crisscross look like a yeah. baseball field. Yeah. And, and I think that's just cool. It takes me a little longer to do. But so what are the things if you want to list your house and I called John Brodine, the real estate expert, and he said, I want to I want to sell my house. I want to put it on the market. Come and take a look. Tell me what I got to do. And what are the things, especially first on the outside, that, that you really should do to make this house look more appealing? Yeah. So really good question. We get it all the time. I'll start with the most basic stuff and we'll work up to mm -hmm. you know the more advanced stuff. So we're starting at square one here. Okay. Uh, we're sweeping the porch, the driveway, all the walkways. Um, Take your broom and sweep your soffits. Get all those cobwebs out of there. Get any bird poop off your siding. Um, get all the you know all the dust off of everything. Um, clean around your front door, uh, storm door, door jams, the door surround. Make sure there's no cobwebs, no dust on any of that. Um, you know you don't want the so when you're showing a house, the real estate agent's going to walk up unless it's the very first house on your list. Mm -hmm. In which case, the realtor might get there first and unlock it, and you walk right in. If it's not the first house, the real estate agent's going to walk up. They're going to be fiddling with their phone, getting the lockbox open, trying to get the key out. And so you're going to be standing there next to the front door for a little bit. And you don't want to be getting creeped out by, you know, spider webs mm -hmm. hanging down and gross stuff everywhere. People don't use their front door that often. So it's right. You'd be surprised at how many people their front door isn't super clean, mm -hmm. the area around it. So that's really, really important. You know, nothing that a little pressure washing wouldn't fix. If you got a pressure wash, yeah. pressure wash everything. Um, you know, that's a good point. I never thought about that. You don't. Your front door generally isn't really used that much. No. You're always going yeah. in through the garage door mm -hmm. or the you know side door. And you see super clean, meticulous people uh, who keep their house really well. It's it's still not uncommon for the front door to be you know the area around the front door to be a little nasty just because yeah it doesn't get used as much. You don't see it all the time because um, you're everybody goes in through the garage or whatever yep. depending on what type of house you have. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna want to clean the windows inside and out um, or or hire it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, and it's usually a pretty cheap thing to hire out. Sure. If you ever wondering about who to get a hold of, I can steer you in the right direction. All right. Um, clean the gutters um, because if you've got stuff sticking out of the gutters, that's mm -hmm. another thing that people notice. And, well, and Like flowers and weeds? Yeah. And that's one of the things. <laughs> all this stuff is all pretty superficial except cleaning the gutters. Keeping the gutters clean is pretty critical to making sure water can flow away mm -hmm. from the foundation. So yes. You guys know, anybody who knows anything about foundations and construction got to keep that water going away mm -hmm. keeping your gutters clean is important um so even if your gutters haven't been clean for the whole seven years that you've owned the house clean them before you sell the house because yep. you don't want to to show that uh that it's just a bad look um you want to pull all the weeds from your rock beds clean up your rock beds if it's fall uh you know take your blower blow out all the leaves um get them looking good you know prune your plants a little bit uh your your landscaping um plants uh weed whack your driveway cracks your sidewalk cracks if there's weeds growing in mm -hmm. there then blow that off as well or sweep it um like you said pressure washing's a really good idea pressure wash your garage doors pressure wash area around the most important stuff is the area that you're going to see when you walk up to that front door uh -huh. not every family is going to you know when they're looking at your house is going to walk all the way around see everything but they're for sure going to be walking up to your front door and they're going to be in the driveway so make sure that area is spotless there's no excuse all this kind of stuff is the basics, um, and and uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but paint, uh, any chipped and peeling paint you want to fix that. Yes, up. take a paint can and a paintbrush, touch everything up mm -hmm. that, that needs to be touched up. Um, beyond looking good, that's also going to help uh, the buyers with um, who who use different types of financing be able to qualify to sure. be able to buy your house. Now, I, I do have a question, but I don't want to get you off uh, kilter oh. here. But um, you talked about driveways. Yeah. And have you ever had anybody say, well, there's some cracks in the concrete driveway? Because I just want to tell you people, I did concrete work for many, many, many years. And, and people would ask me, do you guarantee this driveway? And I say, yeah, I guarantee it will crack yeah. because we yeah. live in the tundra. Yeah. But I can control, hopefully, a little bit where the cracks go. But, yeah. you know, that's all part of living up here, too. Sidewalks and, and driveways, they can, you know, from when you go from 60 to below to 95 above, 
uh, things move and exactly. give and settle and heave. But, um, you know, a lot of the times, too, is you might see a little bit of that in the spring. But by summer, it's all back and nice again. Yep. Um, maybe not on that first impression so much unless mm-hmm. it's really drastic. Yep. Uh, every inspector is going to note that there's tripping hazards. You, have, okay. Have to to sure. When it gets that bad where it turns into a hazard. Yeah. And and if you've got something where you, you've got, you know, big, huge cracks and gaps where it, it might be where whatever it is is getting to the end of its life cycle, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's one thing. But if you're talking regular stuff, most people look right past Right, it. right. You know, uh, one I would point out, because I just noticed it because we just remodeled part of our basement, is mm-hmm. when, especially when you have, like, kids and stuff, you don't, because you, you look at it every day so you don't pay attention. Yeah. But when you start seeing all those fingerprints and dirt and everything that's on, like, the trim around the door frames yeah. and on the light switches and all that kind of stuff, I mean, if you're going into a house and it's your first, I mean, that's, it's kind of gross when yeah. you when you see that stuff, but in your own house, I mean, you get used to seeing it every day, so you don't even pay attention. Yeah, it's like the way that people, everybody knows that when the way you stage a house up before you sell it, it's not really possible to live like that mm-hmm. all the yeah. time. You know, <laughs> even if you're getting the house super deep cleaned every week, there's going to come a time where you know it's it gets a little bit dirty but in my house it is because like i said i'm ocd Uh, yeah (laughs) i'm over there washing walls (laughs) well wash you know that's the thing some people maybe don't know to do that but you know when you're doing your interior deep cleaning make sure you take care of that you know clean off your baseboards clean off your light switch covers and we're having people be extra careful with especially like light light switch covers and doorknobs clean those after every single showing before and after oh i suppose especially now too yep Yep. um so you know though the stuff we covered on the exterior is really the basics, and you have to do that. There's really no excuse not to. It t- it could take one afternoon of just a little bit of work. It's nothing that's going to cost a lot of money. It's not going to take a lot of time, um, and it's going to really pay off because if you if you're lacking on any of those things, I mean, it just it's not worth mm-hmm. missing one of those things that's going to turn off buyers. Now, this is you know taking it up a step, and once you know. Make sure it's clean and then decorating. You don't want it to be completely blank. Even, you know, having it be clean and blank is better than dirty and blank, Mm -hmm. but you want to have it uh, well decorated, seasonal appropriate stuff. Sure. You know, like fall time, you have your fall decorations out by your front step, Um, you know, fall flowers, having planters like between garage stalls, if you have an attached garage is a good look or, or next to walkways, you know, depending if you have a porch or not decorating the porch, um, you know, around your front door, having a wreath on the front door, you can have, you know, a wreath on your front door. That's, you know, if it's a winter style one in the winter, you could have a fall one in the fall. Sure. That sort of thing. Um, making it just so it doesn't look completely empty and blank. Um, I find this is more important with older homes. Yeah. Uh, it's just in my personal experience, like brand new homes, they might look, you know, pretty good even with nothing sitting around, but with older homes, to show that it's been well taken care of, it's it's. I think this stuff is a little more important, right? Because there's a lot of nice older homes yeah. uh, that have a lot of life left in them. Yep, yep. And you, when you see the ones that are well decorated, and the, you can tell the person has pride of ownership, you you make better assumptions about sure. how the house has been cared for. You know, having a nice welcome mat. Um, you know, like I said, seasonal decorations. Um, you don't want to have like, you know go completely overboard where your whole front yard is crowded with decorations. Yeah. It looks like you're kind of putting a dress on a pig. Yeah. You don't want it to be distracting, Mm -hmm. um, but you definitely don't want to have too few either. You want it to look nice. And you know, it's, if you're unsure where to start, go to Pinterest or drive around a little bit, drive around some of the nicer neighborhoods, see what those people are doing, take ideas. It's really not too hard and it's cheap. Um, So, uh, and then, so when you're talking so that's that's kind of up a step, and this is it's going to pay off if you do if you do both of these things, you're in a good spot. Mm-hmm. Your curb appeal is you're maxing out the curb appeal for your house. Um, now, if you really want to take it a step further, or maybe your home is in need of some you know of some fixing up a little bit, and you want to do some of these things, if you want to take it a step further, you could install new house numbers. So there's a oh. range here. You install new house numbers looks good. Uh, replacing like the light fixtures outside mm-hmm. can really dress it up. Um, getting a new front door. Now we're starting to get a little bit more expensive, but um, that's the thing that people touch and you know have the most hands-on yep. experience with yep. when they're in the house. 
have you know so having a secure and it also makes people feel secure to have a good secure good solid uh, strong yeah. solid front door that's mm-hmm. clean and looks nice um, make sure the lock works well and all that kind of stuff if there's a trick to it probably means you need to replace it yes. because the realtor opening the door and the buyers aren't going to know the trick that you know. Yep. So it gotta, kinda, well, you just got to jiggle this a yeah. little bit this way and pull and push at the same time and it'll open right up. Yeah. And yeah. for you, you do that every time and it's habit and it's normal. But for somebody coming in, they're going to think something's wrong with your door. Okay. There kind of is. Yep. You know? well, there is. <laughs> so yeah. Just replace it. Make sure it works really well. Uh, new garage doors really change the curb. Oh, yeah, they home. do. Now mm-hmm. we're talking, you know, this is probably the most expensive thing on this list. Um, but it's, it's something that can, if your garage doors are really old and in need of replacement, it could really change the way your home looks. Also add better insulation to your garage. If your garage is heated, all sorts of things. Um, new mailbox. If your mailbox is like close to your house or right leading, you know, into your driveway, that can dress things up a little bit. Some people even do some landscaping around their mailbox. If it's at the end of their driveway, Mm -hmm. um, new porch seating, like have, you know, nice, chairs and sitting area out there if your porch is big enough um, or landscape lighting which is another thing that can really spruce up the way a home looks um, and and you know most of these things aren't that costly no uh the ones are you know when you're talking doors and things like that uh, can't you just usually get that back when you sell so i, I was just gonna go into that so i'm glad you asked you can um, but that's where you want to consult with me first because if you are in a you know in a neighborhood and a size of house and age of house where you're close to kind of the price ceiling, Mm -hmm. maybe it's not going to make sense. But if you're in an area that has tons, you know, where you're the cheapest house on the block and your house needs a little bit of updating, that's where this stuff could really pay off. And you could maybe even get more than dollar for dollar what you spend on it back. Mm -hmm. It could be a good investment for you. Um, So the more expensive things, there's going to be fewer, you know, you just want to consult with me because I don't want you to waste money on stuff that's not going to come through right. back from the sale. Spend all that money and you won't maybe not get it back. Yeah. yeah. Um. When when somebody, if you're showing them a house, uh, is it common or is this what you would normally do? And I'm guessing uh, being you, John, you do this, but people say, I want to take a walk around this whole house outside mm-hmm. and inside. I want to see everything in the backyard. I want to see soffits. I want to see gutters. I want to see, you know, sometimes you'll drive by a house uh, that the, the front of the house looks just beautiful. You go to the backyard, it's fenced in, and it's just a big old bunch of dirt with dog poop all over the place. And yeah. I mean, is, is that what you do? You you know, people got to, they want to see everything that they're ready to purchase. The the only way we don't do that is if somebody rules it out, you know, okay. inside for some reason, like, oh, this bedroom's way too small. Our family's not going to fit into this house. Mm-hmm. Ruled out onto the next one. We don't want to, we don't want to overwhelm you and, and, you know, your brain only has so much space to keep track of so many things. So if we can rule out a house and just push it out of our memory and forget about it uh, for some reason, we'll do that. But if it's a possibility, if the house is, you know, in there, you know, if they have not ruled it out. We're going to look at everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned uh, things like Pinterest or whatever, where, yeah. where you could get your ideas if you're thinking about selling your house, things that you should do to dress it up. But to make it easier, I would think just to call you and yeah. get you a real real estate expert and get off on the right foot or the right track right off the yep. bat. Yep. And then I don't think there'd be any issues. Yep. Yep. I can, I, I'm not a decorator, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve. Mm-hmm. So I could, I could send you to Hobby Lobby with a basic shopping list. And there you go. You, you throw the stuff where it needs to go and we're looking good. All right. Uh, you got anything else people should be thinking about here or not? No, it's a, uh, You know, the outside of your house is really, really important. It's not something you should neglect. So Mm -hmm. when you're getting your home ready to sell, pay, pay a lot of attention to it. It's, it's one of the spots where you can spend the least time and the least money and get the best return. It's easy to correct these problems. You know, a lot of it just takes a little bit of work. You know, there's a lot of people like me, uh, a lot of the times I don't care what people think of me, but I do care what they think when they see my house. Yes. Uh, yeah, a lot of people way. have that attitude. Well, as long as the outside looks good, it doesn't matter what the inside looks like because I live here, but uh, it's all important. Yeah. Uh, that that first impression is yeah. huge. Well, and just the little things, I mean... You know, you can have the, your inside of your house just clean to the, like, you know, everything's scrubbed down, mm-hmm. but then you don't Windex that, like you said, that front door, and you notice that there's a whole bunch of, like, dog nose prints and stuff all over it. The first thing I'm going to think is, oh, they, yeah, you know, the whole they have, thing's dirty. Yeah, yeah they, got, they got pets, so I wonder what other 
you know, is there a chair height like on top of a urine stain or something? Yeah. I'm get, all that stuff's <laughs> going to start going through my head. Yep. Yep. It's, it, it's, it's just the way we think about things, especially when you're making as important of a decision as picking out a house, mm-hmm. you're, you know, you're really critical uh, because people are picky. You have every right to be picky when you're spending that much money and you're, it's going to be where you live for the next five years at least. So, yep. yeah. Again, John, you answered a ton of questions yeah. for us. Uh, love having you in here. Um, we're going to see you again soon. Yep. Uh, boy, I love doing these uh, weekly Berkshire Hathaway podcasts, especially when real estate expert John Brodine is in the studio. Yeah, uh, until next, well, whenever we we'll see you, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. maybe we'll run into you on a golf course or something. There we go. Uh, before we go, how do we get a hold of John Brodine? Uh, cell phone, 701-213-5428. You can text me or call me. Hey, there you go. Again, on our weekly Berkshire Hathaway podcast, thanks to John Brodine. And until next time, everybody out there, enjoy your day.